Hi, it's Andrea Markham. Welcome to day six of Start here on Gaia. Life brings twists and turns. It just does. There'll be new stuckets and new possibility. And our practice gives us the tools to stop and find the resiliency to start something new again and again with awareness, benevolence, and calm. Our practice today reflects those twists and turns. And we'll start in a child's pose. Find your way into child's pose. Your arms can reach in front of you or alongside you, whatever feels comfortable. Sometimes it's nice to rest your head on a block, but let this be a place where you find an inward turn and a place where we can stop so that we can start. Stop moving, fixing and fidgeting. Take one breath at a time. Observe and pause. Start to create space. We sense it in our bodies, but in our breaths as well. Space between the inhales and the exhales. Space within the inhales and the exhales. Maybe even a little bit more space in between the thoughts in our head. And we turn the volume down on negative chatter and distractions, excuses. We accept and acknowledge. Accepting where we are right now and acknowledging room for expansion without fault or judgment. It's our time to renew so that we can take mindful action on our mat as well as off. And we stir in our ABC's awareness, benevolence, and calm. Let your breath take on the ujjayi quality of texture, brushing up against the back of your throat and the soft palate. giving you an additional tool to witness the rise and the fall. The energy and the surrender. A balance that will be reflected in our practice as strength and flexibility, effort and surrender. Inhale and exhale. Take three more cycles of breath here. And then bring yourself on to all fours. And once you're on all fours, inhale your right arm to the sky. And just swoop that right arm underneath you, coming onto your right shoulder. You can take your left arm up overhead and just play with this initial twist. Let it dance with your breath. And fill it with your ABCs, awareness, benevolence, and calm. Enjoy a few moments here.
Hello and inhale to bring you back to center onto your hands and knees. Inhale your left arm up to the sky. And then just exhale and swoop your left arm through. Bring the right hand forward if that feels good. And give yourself a few moments just to tinker in your laboratory. Notice what you bump up against. We've been practicing together all week. There might be evidence of your efforts, a little soreness, a little stickiness. Last couple breaths here. And then ease your way back onto your hands and knees and come into downward facing dog, curl the toes under, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. It's like the embrace of an old friend, down dog. A home base that we return to day after day with different somatic ingredients, different things going on in our bodies, different things racing around in our mind. And we take on this shape consistently. It's a place for us to turn inward, a place for us to touch base. Three breaths here, reach your fingers deep into the soil. Let the sit bones rise and the heels sink down. Just drink in the juicy goodness of the simplicity of your old friend, downward facing dog. See if you can't see it in a whole new light. And then inhale to plank, upper push up position and pause and see if you can find some of that same enthusiasm for your old friend plank position. <laughs> your fingers are reaching deep into the soil here as well. Employ the strength of your legs and your abdominals and push the ground away so you feel that slight protraction of the shoulder blades. Remember that you can put your knees down on the ground and modify. Part of that, accept and acknowledge, meeting yourself where you are. As the intensity rumbles and builds, match it with the equanimity of ABCs. Three breaths just like this. Hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. We're gonna inhale to plank, upper push up position again. Allow your gaze to drift forward. Maybe put your knees down. Chaturanga. Elbows brush, but don't crush the ribs. We're going to come back to plank position and then head back to downward facing dog. We'll do that slowly, but rhythmically. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Back to your plank position and then downward facing dog. Very nice. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Back into our plank position. And then downward facing dog. Walk your hands to your feet. Walk all the way to the back edge of your mat. Interlace your hands once you get back there. Bend your knees quite deeply. Go up and up and over. And let it feel so nice to release. If you'd like to use a strap or a towel between your hands, to give yourself a little bit more freedom, have at it. We try not to bounce, you're just gonna let it be this drippy release, something that feels willowy, no tightness, no expectation. And while you're here in your forward fold, notice which of your pinky fingers is on the bottom and just bring your hands back to your butt enough to relace the other way and take the arms up and over and notice the slight little nuanced differences here. You can start to straighten your legs, but it's a muscular adventure and it doesn't feel like you're locked into your legs. See if there's tightness in your jaw, your face. Last three breaths here.
Release your hands to your mat. Wander slowly back to downward facing dog. Appreciate the stretch all along the backs of your legs you've just visited and stir that into your downward facing dog here. Inhale to plank, upper push up position. Looking forward, bend your elbows, Chaturanga Dandasana, all the way onto your belly. Interlace your hands behind your back as we just did. Drag the knuckles back. Let the heart go forward and up. Not so much the chin, but the heart. Ignite your legs so the tops of the feet press and the kneecaps actually lift off your mat. So you feel an activation of the legs. You're lifting the low belly so you feel supported there. If you want to lift the legs here and it feels fine with your lower back, you can do that. Or keep the tops of the feet pressing down. Enjoy feeling the expanse of your breath against the ground here. Three cycles of breath. Nice. You're going to gently release this into cobra or up dog. So bring yourself down and locate your hands next to the floating ribs. If it's up dog, everything lifts except for your hands and the tops of the feet. Cobra, you keep your hips down. One's not better than the other, but maybe it feels better to you today. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Notice what's going on in your head physically and emotionally, and see if you can be willing to let some of that go. Bend your knees, walk or float, feet all the way in between the hands. Inhale, heart extends. Exhale, fold it in. Inhale, rise and reach to the sky, Urdhva Hastasana. And then stand in your mountain with your hands at your heart or your arms alongside your body. Fully inhabit your mountain for a moment. That juicy stop to start in every vinyasa. Surya A, inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold it forward. Inhale, look forward, heart forward. Walk or if you're ready to float, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, up dog or cobra. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And a few breaths here. Great. Bend your knees, walk or float, feet to the hands. Inhale, heart reaches. Exhale, fold it in. Inhale, all the way up, reach to the sky. And then collect your hands to your heart or let the arms come to your side. Inhale, arms swoop up. Exhale, fold it forward. Inhale, look forward. Step back or float back to Chaturanga. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha. Exhale, Adho Mukha. And a few breaths here. Great. Bend your knees, walk or float, feet to the hands. Inhale, heart extends. Exhale, fold it in. Inhale all the way up, reach to the sky. Bring your hands through to your heart. Right. Two more like that. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. One last round of these. Bend your knees, walk or float, feet to the hands. Inhale, the heart extends. Exhale, fold it in. Inhale all the way up. And collect your hands to your heart. Take this last one on your own. Inhale. And then downward facing dog.
In your downward facing dog, inhale your right leg back behind you. If it feels great to open up the hip and bend the knee and take a little moment, you can do that. And then let the legs straighten, square your hips off. Come forward to plank and take your right knee to your left arm. So you're gonna crisscross right knee, left arm. Know that you have the option to put your left knee, your back knee down on the ground anytime. Optionally, right knee slides down to the right wrist and comes back up again. Remember, optional, right? Right knee down to the right wrist and back up again. One more time, right knee down and back up. Stay here, fallen triangle. Extend the right leg out to the right, spin to the inside of your left foot and take your left arm up to the sky. It's great to stay just like this. Some of you will lift the right leg up off the ground and hover it there. Sometimes I think about lifting the right leg, and then when I lift it, I think about putting it back down on the ground, if you know what I mean. Take a few breaths here. Sometimes it's kind of juicy to take the top arm up and overhead. So play with it. See what feels nice today. Three breaths, wherever it is you've landed with this. Gonna become three-legged down dog, left hand down, swoop the right leg back behind you to where it all began, and pause. Great, you're gonna come forward, right knee, right arm. If you have an Ekapada Kundanyasana two that you wanna sprinkle in here, you can, or stay in plank with your right knee against your right arm, and let that be enough. Couple breaths here. We're gonna step it through. And once you step it through, you're gonna keep your right hand down on the ground on a block, left hand down, right arm up to the sky. Pause. Take a few breaths. Maybe put your back knee down on your mat. Maybe put your left hand on a block. Could be that you take your right arm up and overhead in this position. You'll rotate the left ribs to the sky. You'll start to feel a little of the twists and turns as promised. Three breaths, just like this. Remember the option of putting the back knee down on your mat anytime. You're gonna take your right arm up to the sky. Great. And then you're gonna slowly Bring yourself all the way upright into a crescent shape, but with your right arm back behind you. You might find better fortune doing that with your back knee down on the ground, because it can get a little wobbly, can't it? <laughs> Excellent. I like to call this our Bob Fosse moment. It feels like you want to do your jazz hands almost. And we'll take a few breaths here. You can Google Bob Fosse. Excellent. Take your right hand down your left leg and your left arm up and back. This might be the moment that you put your back knee down on your mat. Remember, when it's wobbly, that's the pot of gold. That's our story, and we're sticking to it. Last three breaths, just like this. Come back to your Bob Fosse. Arms out to the side. Excellent. And then just take left hand down on the inside, right hand down on the inside, and we'll lower the back knee down and come all the way up into a low lunge. Excellent. Take your right hand onto your left wrist and then go up and up and up and over to the right. You can stay just like this. This feels pretty great. Some of you will drop your right hand down onto a block, so you could grab your block and put your block there, or right hand down onto the ground if for some reason it goes there, and then we'll roll those right ribs to the sky. Remember that you're breathing the whole time. Three breaths, just exploring a little side stretch, seeing how that feels.
Right, last three. Last two. Nice. Bring yourself all the way upright. Frame your right foot. Curl the back toes under. Bring your back knee off your mat. And then come up into your crescent pose. Arms to the sky. Great. Feel the right thigh bone draw back. And the left hip point roll forward a bit. As if your left hip point was interested in making its way into the inseam of your right leg. Great. Take a few breaths like this. Great. And then from here, you're going to bend your elbows and lower the back knee and let it hover. And then bring yourself back up. In theory, keeping the front knee bent, but letting the back leg straighten. Lower the back knee. You can always leave the back knee down if you need to. And bring it back up. Great. Lower the back knee. Let it hover. And bring it back up. Excellent. Lower the back knee. And bring it back up. And then last time like that, lower the back knee. Maybe you leave it there or you come back up into crescent and we'll linger for a moment. Sometimes I keep a little bend in the back knee just so I can organize the axial body a little bit. Other days it feels great to straighten out that back leg so you'll play it by ear. Incline the pinky fingers towards each other and the thumbs apart so there's freedom built into the alignment of the bones in that upper trapezius that can get a little bossy. The upper trapezius can sort of rule the roost and find its way into our ears sometimes. Okay, we're going to stay here for three and for two. Again, we're going to return the hands to the inside of the right foot. We're going to take skandasana. So you're going to spin onto your left heel and you may want to frame your right foot with some blocks or sit down on a block here. Some of you can sit down and actually extend the arms and some of you might even be able to arrange for a bind. So it's not so much all the stuff that you're doing, it's the integrity with which you're doing the simplest of things. Let's see if you can stay with it in your own way today for just a few breaths. Remember the option of sitting down onto a block if that's helpful, or even a couple of blocks stacked up. Great. Very carefully release your hands to the inside of that right foot and walk it into prasarita. So let your feet be parallel to the little edges of your mat. We'll keep our hands on the ground today for this one. Inhale, look forward. And exhale, fold in. Hands on the ground or on blocks if it's helpful. And crown of the head can go on the ground or on a block. There might even be a few of you who like to sport a tripod headstand at this juncture or press into a handstand at this juncture. It takes all kinds. Last three breaths with whatever it is that you're up to. Excellent. If you're in a, ha a headstand, split your legs, lightly place your feet down on the ground, and then walk your hands forward for all of us. Were it me, I would have my block at the ready. We're going to take our left hand right underneath our face, possibly on a block, and right hand on the lower back. And just notice, it's really tempting to let the hips go with us. And if you have lower back stuff, you actually might need to let the hips go with you. But if your low back is fine, feel yourself draw the low belly in. Left hand stays where it is. 
And just your chest is going to twist towards the front edge of your mat. And let that be enough. Be there for a little while, just noticing how tempting it is to drop the left hip and instead opt for letting it go a little bit more into the thoracic band of the spine. And then we'll take the right arm up to the sky and pause. Take a few moments, see if you can bring some buoyancy into the upper body and stability into the lower body. And remember in your low lunge when you were reaching up and over and finding that side stretch and let the side stretch inform what you're up to here. Hang with it, breath by breath by breath. Great. Unwind both hands to the ground and then both hands on your hips. Firm your belly and come all the way up to standing. Keep your hands on your hips. Turn and face the front of the room. Walk your right foot to the right and your left foot to the left a little bit. So if you had flashlights on your hip points, they'd both be facing the front edge of your mat. You might want your block handy for this bit. Right hand stays on your hip, left arm extends to the sky. Inhale, and then as you exhale, you'll place your left hand on the ground or on a block, either on the inside or on the outside of your right foot, and the right arm will come up to the sky. Pavrita Trikonasana, twisting triangle. Remember what you found when your hand was on your lower back moments ago, facing the side of your mat. And see if you can bring some of that into the mix here. Excellent. Three rich, deep, steady breaths here. Great. You're going to unwind into down dog, not a vinyasa, just downward facing dog. Move your block off to the side. And know that it's enough. It's plenty to stay in your downward facing dog and to skip this reverse vinyasa unless you're game. You'll come directly into up dog or cobra. Flip over the tops of your feet. From your cobra or up dog, Chaturanga Dandasana into plank position, and then downward facing dog for a few breaths. And maybe you snuggle into child's pose here instead of your downward facing dog. Three contemplative ABC laced breaths here. Really great. Inhale your left leg back behind you. If you want to open the hip and bend the knee and let it feel delicious that way, go for it. Explore a couple moments just like this. And then you'll straighten that leg and square off the hips. And we'll come forward to plank, left knee, right arm, you're crisscrossing. And you have the option to put the back knee down on the ground if you want or need to. Remember that this bit is optional. Slide that left knee down to the right wrist and back up again. Down to the wrist and back up again. One more time, down to the wrist and back up again. And then fall in triangle. Extend the left leg out and the right arm up to the sky. You're on the inside of the right foot the razor's edge of the outside of the left foot. If you'd like to, lift the left leg off the ground. You don't have to. If you want to, take your top arm up and overhead and then let it percolate for three and for two. 
three-legged down dog, right hand down, swoop your left leg back behind you and pause. From three-legged dog, come forward, left knee, left arm. There are a few of you that will do the arm balance here. The rest of us are going to stay with the knee against the arm in our plank. From here, we'll simply step it through. And once you've stepped it through, right hand, and this time I actually mean right hand on the ground, and left arm up to the sky, right from left, sometimes a thing for me. You could have your back knee down on the ground here if you'd like to. Maybe you took the top arm overhead here. We're going to make our way into our Bob Fosse. So you're going to come all the way up and allow your torso to turn. You could have your back knee down on the ground. If it's wobbly, we know that that's the pot of gold. Take a few breaths just like this. And then slide your left hand down the back of your right leg and let that right arm venture up and back. Oftentimes a pretty interesting balance challenge here. See if we can hang out for a couple breaths. Really good. We're going to make our way back to Bob Fosse. Arms out to the side. Terrific. Now you're going to take your right hand down onto the ground, left hand down onto the ground, back knee down onto the ground, Anjaniasana, arms up to the sky, we're in our low lunge. Great, take a hold of the right wrist with your left hand and root to rise as you go up and over and let it be juicy. You can kind of rotate the left ribs to the sky and play with it all into those intercostals on the right side and the right side waist. For those of you for whom it makes sense to put your left hand on a block on the ground, you can explore that. If you're already finding everything you need, just holding on to that wrist, that's perfect. Take a few breaths here. From your belly, come upright here. Frame your left foot, curl the back toes under. Bring that back knee off your mat and come up into your crescent shape, all the way up into crescent pose. Remind yourself that if at any point in time you prefer to do this stuff, leaving the back knee down on your mat, it's a great way to roll. I'm just gonna carefully bend the elbows, lower the back knee and let it hover and then bring yourself back up to crescent. Lower the back knee and let it hover, and then bring yourself back up. Lower the back knee and let it hover. Bring yourself back up. Great. Lower the back knee and let it hover, and then bring yourself back up. One more time, lower the back knee and let it hover. And then bring yourself back up into a crescent where we'll stay for a while and you get to explore through and see what you see. Left hip draws back and right hip draws forward. You're letting those bossy trapezius muscles relax a little bit. The front ribs are softening in. You have the option of the back knee down if this is getting a little bit too spicy. Last two breaths like this. Great, we're gonna take both hands on the inside of the left foot and this becomes our skandhasana. So you'll spin onto that right heel and carefully Arrange, if it's helpful, take the block and sit your hip onto your block. So if that's helpful here, you can. A lot of us are gonna frame the left leg and have blocks on either side. If you're somebody who likes to extend the arms while we're here, you can do that. 
If you're somebody who binds while we're here, you'll do that. Just proceed with caution. A few more breaths like this. Great. Unwind. Bring your hands to the ground. Support yourself on the exit into prostorita so your feet are parallel to the little edges of your mat. And this time you'll take a hold of your big toes. If they're far away, you'll use your shins or your ankles instead. Inhale, gazing forward. Exhale, fold it in. And although it's a straight-legged forward fold, if you're quite flexible, you want to make sure that there's a micro bend in your knees so that you're getting into the muscular action here and not overtaxing the joints or the connection. So joints are where two bones come together and the connections are what tether bone to bone and muscle to bone. We don't want to tax those, we want to get into our muscles. Outer, upper hips are hugging in. And we just enjoy this forward fold for a few breaths. Allow your head to relax in every way. All right, let go of the big toes. Wander your hands forward. Were it me, I would have my block at the ready. And you're going to let your belly draw in. Right hand's going to go right underneath your face and left hand on your low back. So that you just get like that feel for the sacrum. You're just getting a little bit more intel on the machinery as your hand is on your back here. Little lift of the lower belly. So we've got a little bit of Uddiyana Bandha. Then rotate your chest towards the front edge of your mat without involving the arm just yet. So we're just in that axial body. Uh, my flexible friends, be a little careful about locking out the legs here. That's actually going to be trickier for you than relying on your flexibility. And then when you're ready, you're going to take that left arm up to the sky. So you want to keep feeling like there's a little support of the low belly, outer hips hugging in, rotating through the middle band of the back, and letting your neck stay relaxed. That's it. And then just do your best and have fun with it. See where it's interesting today. Every inhale, you're expanding a little bit wider. Every exhale is that little loving nudge into your twist. We're going to stay with it just for a few more breaths. See if you're resorting to grinding your teeth and see if you can eliminate that part of it. Happens to the best of us. Right. Unwind your hands to the ground and then carefully place your hands on your hips and firm your belly. Come all the way up to standing. Keep your hands on your hips. Turn and face the front edge of your mat. Step your left foot to the left and imagine those flashlights on your hip bones and they're both facing the front of your mat or the front of the room. Keep your left hand on your hip. Take your right arm up to the sky. Pavrita Trikonasana. Reach out. Your hand can go on a block on the inside or on the outside of your left foot, right hand down, and eventually left arm up to the sky. It lives in the same family as the pose we just did facing the long side of your mat. You'll feel a connection of your tailbone into your back heel, so that has a nice stable feel to it, and then we'll lengthen through the side waist, extending that left arm up to the sky. Let this shoulder blade slide down your back. And just see if you can stay with expanse on the inhale and loving nudge of a twist on the exhale. Two more cycles of breath. Okay, you're going to unwind and step into downward facing dog. Remember, you're under no obligation to do the reverse vinyasa, but if it has your name on it, you'll come into up dog or cobra, just flip over the tops of the feet. And just for fun this time, consider this possibility. Stay on the tops of your feet as you take your chaturanga. 
And when I say fun, I'm not sure what I mean by that. And then from there, upward facing, mm -hmm, and then downward facing dog. And maybe a little sigh or a sound as you reach the comfort of the loving arms of your down dog or your child's pose. Take a couple breaths like this. Great, you're gonna inhale to plank, upper push-up position. You may well want your knees down for this part. One forearm at a time, plank on your forearms. So in your plank on your forearms, maybe interlacing your hands becomes something really helpful here. Now listen carefully, you're not gonna take either of your forearms off the ground. You're gonna keep both forearms down on the ground, but you're gonna come to the outside of your right foot and stack your left foot on top, as if you were doing a Vashistasana. So just like this, you'll stack left foot on top of right foot, but both forearms stay onto the ground, and you're into a twist that involves your internal and external obliques, doesn't it? We're gonna stay here and breathe. For three, just do the best you can do. And for two. Great, come down the middle. Uh -huh. And then take it to side two. If you need a break in between sides, go for it. If you're not taking a break in between sides, we'll talk about it after. <laughs> and then you'll stay with it here. Excellent, keep breathing. Two more, you're doing great. Come down the middle, plank on your forearms, walk your feet in dolphin pose. Were it me, I would take child's pose with my knees down on the ground and just hang out there. Some of you will stay in this dolphin pose. A few of you will take Pinchamirasana. So if you have the inversion, you can turn upside down and take the full arm balance or dolphin pose, or child's pose. Maybe in your dolphin, you lift your right leg behind you and take a few breaths there. And if you're in your dolphin pose with your right leg lifted, put the right foot down and consider lifting your left leg and pausing there. Put your left foot down on the ground if it's lifted. Downward facing dog, unless you would rather step into a child's pose. And we'll take a few moments just to get our druthers about us, just to collect ourselves. Great, three cycles of breath like this, where we come back to what matters most, which is our stop to start and our ABCs, awareness, benevolence, and calm. That's way more important than whether or not you kicked up into a pinch of my rasana a moment ago. Great, bend your knees, walk or float your feet to your hands. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, fold in. Terrific. Bend your knees, chair pose. Hands in a prayer. We're going to twist left elbow on the outside of the right thigh. Great. Shift the weight back into the heels. Feel freedom in your toes. So if you wanted to lift all 10 of your toes, that would be doable. It's great to stay in this prayer position or some of you left hand down and right arm up to the sky. So using a block is really helpful to that. A block underneath that left hand. And if your lower back is happy, notice if your left knee is poking in front of your right knee and just see if you can shift that back so that's actually indicating what that left femur is doing. Find a little freedom in the upper back and you're allowed to have fun here. Great. Last two breaths like this. Now imagine that you're a little bit of a stork and you're gonna stay in your twist and just 
Lift your left heel towards your butt and see if you can balance there for a moment. If it's wobbly, pot of gold, three breaths, just like this. I'm gonna let your left leg stay off the ground as you come into twisting Arda. So take your hand to a block or to the ground, left leg off the ground, and you're twisting. Again, a block is a phenomenal tool so that you can create a little stability and a little bit of height in the pose. Great, your gaze can go sideways or up. There are those days where looking down is gonna be really helpful to balance, so remember that. Great. Brilliant. You're gonna bring your right hand down onto the ground, cross your left knee behind your right knee, and sit down into Ardha Matsyandrasana. Right hand behind you, maybe even on a block, left arm up to the sky. You can simply hug that front knee or slide your left tricep down the back or down the outside of that right thigh. And although you're welcome to turn your gaze to the back of the room, it's not about cranking your neck here. It's about turning through that thoracic band of the spine like the rest of our twists have indicated. Maybe you're somebody who finds a bind here, so if that's your thing, you can do it. Think of sitting into your sit bones, inhaling and growing tall in between the vertebra of your spine. So in those gelatinous discs between the vertebra, you're hydrating and inspiring a little bit more height. And when you find that space in your inhale, you can use the loving nudge of the exhale to go in a little bit deeper. There might be a few of you who are tempted to do Ekapada Kundanyasana, one here, the arm balance. So you can take your hands to the ground, lean forward, and then split your legs in the arm balance like is about to happen here. Or do as I do and just sit in the twist that you're in right now and enjoy. Couple of breaths with whatever you're playing with. Keyword play. If you're in the arm balance, join us back in our seated twist. And you're gonna unwind your twist, place your feet on your mat, hip distance apart, and reach your arms out in front of you. Plug your shoulders into their sockets. You can stay here, you can pick up your feet, you could even straighten your legs. Did you notice what just happened there? A little abdominal ambush. Excellent. And then lower Ardha Navasana. That can be straight-legged. It's likely to be bent kneed, and you can place your feet down on the ground. And then right leg up to the sky, and we'll twist outside the right leg. You can bend your left knee. You can place your left foot on the ground. You might benefit from a hand or two behind your head. Keep breathing and do the best that you can. We'll switch that out. So just left leg up, twist to the outside of the left leg. Maybe you bend the right knee. You can stamp the right foot down onto the ground. Hand or two behind the head if you need it. Breath steady. Great. We're just going to make that rhythmic side to side. Over to the right and over to the left, over to the right, and over to the left. Terrific, over to the right, and over to the left. One more time, over to the right, but we're gonna stay here. Remind yourself that you can bend the left knee and stamp the left foot down on the ground. And just that right leg is gonna go down and back up. Excellent. Take it down <laughs> and back up. One more time. Down and back up. And we'll swap it out. We'll twist to the outside of the left side. <laughs> left leg goes down and back up. A crowd pleaser. Down and back up. And then one more time. 
down and back up. Come down the middle, Ardha Navasana. Glide it up, Navasana. Beautiful, cross up the ankles, pick up, take a vinyasa or head right into downward facing dog. And then take a few breaths in down dog. Or maybe a child's pose. Great, bend your knees, walk or float, feet to the hands. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, fold in. Bend your knees, chair pose, sit deep, reach high. Hands in a prayer. Hook your right elbow on the outside of your left thigh for a twist. Let the weight feel heavy in the heels and light in the toes. Remind yourself that it's great to keep your hands in the prayer position, but if you love to extend the right hand down, and the left arm up to the sky, you can. Be interested in that right knee in front of the left knee and see if you can keep the knees as even as possible, unless that hurts your lower back, in which case you're actually gonna need to let that happen. Think back to when we were sideways facing the long side of our mat and finding this in that other shape. Let it be that the lower back is stable and the middle band of the back is where this is happening. Keep that as you find your stork position, bring your right heel towards your butt and just play with a little balance here. It's an interesting little awkward moment. A few breaths here. Great, and then it becomes twisting Arda, right hand on your block and left arm up to the sky. And suddenly you're a little bit grateful for that abdominal ambush in the middle of these sides. It's just the same functional muscles in so many ways that you're able to recruit now with a little bit more intel. Stay here. Breathe for three. And for two. Great, bring your left hand to your mat. Cross your right knee behind your left knee, Ardha Matsyandrasana, left hand behind you on the ground or on a block, and then right arm will reach up and you can either hug your left knee or take that right tricep to the outside of your left thigh bone. If there's something more elaborate like a bind that you love to do here, you'll do it. But let yourself find a really comfortable seat so that you can find that spaciousness in the spine. Allow that to come from spaciousness in the mind. And see how it's going with the ABCs. Bring awareness, benevolence, and calm. This is not about you turning into a human corkscrew. You just want to find a nice place. If you did the arm balance on the first side, feel free to sport that arm balance now. Okay, and then gently release back into your seat. Unwind slowly, and then you're gonna place your feet on your mat, hip distance apart, but this time you're gonna lie down onto your back for either a bridge or a full back bend. So you'll lie down and either come into bridge pose or flip your palms next to your ears, pause at the top of your head, and bring yourself into an Urdhva Dhanurasana. Think toes in and heels out.
And then ease your way down from this first one, one hand on your heart and one hand on your low belly. Right, we're going to do one more. Up you go, full back bend or bridge. And any variations that you want to do in your back bend, feel free. Great. And then chin to your chest and you lower down. Give your knees a squeeze into your chest. You can rock side to side and forward and back. And just know that you're going to take a couple of moments now for your possibility pose. Whatever the little puzzle pieces that you've found for your possibility pose, you'll take now a minute or so to work that just to map your progress. Remember, there's no deadline on your possibility pose. I tend to do my possibility pose for a month and then I'll find another one. You can decide the timing on that how long it is that you want to spend with it. It's mostly just to see the puzzle pieces add up to a little progress. If you want to take more time with your possibility pose, you can pause this and work it as long as you'd like. We're going to end up lying on our back when you're done. Feet on the ground, hip distance, knees to the sky, one hand on your heart and one hand on your low belly. Feel the rise and the fall of your breath. And the beating of your heart. Supta Gomukhasana, right knee on top of left knee. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna reach for either your heels or maybe holding the tops of the shins is helpful. So if this is a little bit tighter. Holding the shins can be helpful. Get a little dorsiflexion in the feet so you can bypass the knee and you'll have a little stretch on the outer hip. The way that I like to do this is to cup my heels with my hands. It helps me to drop the shoulders down and not crowd my shoulders into my ears. And the other thing that can be really helpful is to put a block underneath your head, especially if there's struggle in the neck and then just let yourself soak and seep in here you can let your eyes close give yourself a few moments Let your head feel heavy on the ground or on your block. Imagine that you're waist deep in your Shavasana already. Switch sides with this gently left knee on top of right knee. Organize it so that it makes sense. Curling the toes back in your dorsiflexion, holding wherever you need to. Maybe this is where you decide to add a block or a folded blanket under your head. And then just let it speak to you. If it's tight, that doesn't mean it's bad or that you're bad at it. It means it's beneficial. We want to shift that lens, Pradipaksha Bhavanam, seeing what's in the way is the way. 
last few breaths in. And we're going to take a supine twist. So place your feet on the ground, lose the block from underneath your head, and then cross right knee on top of left knee, but this time for a twist. So scoot your hips to the right, let your knees drop to the left. You can take cactus arms or arms out to the side. I sometimes find it really great to take my right arm overhead on this side and explore that vector. And then come to center and switch sides. Cross your left knee on top of your right knee. Scoot your hips to the left so that you land on the outside of the right hip. And take a twist here. Your arms can go however feels great. come back to center and we'll take a little bit of a meditation if you want to take that in your shavasana you can if you prefer to sit upright in a comfortable seat you can i'm ultimately going to leave you in the silence of shavasana after this so if you want to sit cross-legged and then spill out into shavasana afterwards you can As you find your comfortable seat or your shavasana, allow yourself to find that color or that fragrance of your neutral calm. Find it and let it fill you. And as you find your color or your fragrance, notice the place where your breath goes from the outside to the inside. That might be the tickle under your nostrils. You might mostly notice it in your lungs. But it's that magic place where the outer world and our inner world meet. Life is a dance of our inner world and the outer world. And you can think of that tickle point or the air traveling in and out of your lungs as that magical place where the breath, the air that's around us comes inside of us. And then the air that has been inside of us goes back out into the world. And just as there is an exchange of inner and outer world, in every inhale and every exhale, there is inward turn and outward reach. turning inward ultimately so that we can reach out to one another. You're finding that when you give someone your attention.
see if we can add to this that feeling of metta, loving kindness. Fill yourself up with loving kindness. And now bring to mind someone who is going through a difficult situation, a hard time, someone who could use your compassion and your support. from the fullness of your color and your meditation, send out loving kindness in their direction too. Allow every inhale and exhale to remind you of the loving kindness within you, just like the air is within you. And the loving kindness that you are sending out to that person in need. And leave you in silence to hold that to breathe into that, to expand upon that. If you'd like to slide into Shavasana and you're not there now, is the time to do it.
And then you're welcome to stay lying in Shavasana or, or come up to a seat for your own work. And what you'll be doing is every morning you're going to write down three starts. Three things that you would like to start that day. And sometimes it's almost like a list of things to do. Sometimes for me, it's start to make the bed when I wake up in the morning. Or start being better at hydrating throughout the day. But ultimately, what these three starts are, are those little playful puzzle pieces towards untangling our larger, chunkier stuck it three intentions for us to remember throughout the day and writing them down keeps us accountable and consistent, which is key to shifting into real change and to opening up limitless possibility. So each morning you're going to write down the three things that you want to start. And that starts right now. I'll see you tomorrow here. Thanks for practicing with me. Namaste.